Hey everybody, I'm so glad that you tuned in to our Sunday evening broadcast. I'm especially excited about you tuning in in this special broadcast. When we think about this, we just want to talk about it a little bit and uh, focus on the goodness and the blessing of the Lord. So let's bow together and let's pray. Father, we thank you today that we can come before you, Lord. We thank you, Lord, for the blessing of your, your spirit working in our life. And Lord, today, I pray in the mighty name of Jesus, God, that you would remind us, Lord, that heaven and earth will pass away, but God, your word will never pass away. I thank you, Lord, that we are reminded that the word of God is quick and powerful and sharper than a two-edged sword, piercing even the dividing asunder, the soul and the spirit of the joints and the mara, and is a discerner of the thoughts and the intent of our heart. God, I thank you that you've given us the promise that you'll never leave us and you'll never forsake us. So, Lord God, as we open your word tonight, I pray, Lord, that you will speak directly into our hearts and lives. And God, that your spirit will draw us ever closer to you. And we pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Tonight, if you have your Bible, and I hope that you do, I encourage you to take your copy of God's Word and turn over there to the book of Psalms, the book of Psalms, chapter 33. Now, as you're taking your Bible and you're turning there, I want to kind of get you close to me uh, in this broadcast tonight uh, as our online service. As you well know, we're not having our in-person services on Sunday night at the campus of our church, but we are doing online services, and I'm so grateful for everybody who has given so many words of encouragement to me as we have been in this time, this weird time for us, uh, as a church, and thank you for your prayers, your support, your encouragement, and your faithfulness. As you think about tonight, uh, we just went through Thanksgiving, and I hope and pray that it was a blessing for you, a time of giving thanks. Paul reminds us in the Word of God that in everything we're to give thanks to God uh, because this is God's will concerning us in Christ Jesus. And my prayer is that you and your family had a great time of Thanksgiving. Uh, we needed that time uh, to kind of refocus and reboot our thoughts in focusing on how good God is to us and how blessed that we are. And my prayer is that you had a wonderful time with your family uh, it was been weird, uh, you know, as we were getting ready to go into Thanksgiving, the, uh, the word was being given out that, hey, we have to, they were encouraging us not to be together because of the COVID virus and to take extra precautions because of that. And I had many people talking to me about that, about, uh, well, you know, we're living in these weird times, these scary times, and yes, we are. As a matter of fact, that's kind of the jumping off place for me tonight as I come to share my heart with you. You know, the Bible says, I've never seen the righteous forsaken or their seed begging for bread. 2020, as we're going into the holiday season with Thanksgiving and Christmas just around the corner, and all the things that uh, normally would uh, that would in, entail in those holiday seasons, uh, this year is radically different. As we're looking at 2020 and all the things that are going in, 2020 has been an interesting year for all of us. I was reflecting back upon it uh, just the other day in February of this year. Uh, I was in Washington. Uh, at the National Prayer Breakfast, and while I was there, uh, the, uh, uh, the impeachment trial for President Trump was going on. Uh, I started off this year uh, being connected with uh, having an invitation to go to Washington. I was so humbled by that, and I was grateful for that invitation to be able to be at the National uh, prayer breakfast, the presidential prayer breakfast in Washington, and Denise and I had the great op opportunity to be there and be with the senators and be with people that are are really uh, influencing our world. 
I was uh, humbled with that opportunity. I was, uh, it, it was an amazing, an amazing chance to be there and be a part of something that was monumental. Uh, you know, when we were there at the National Day of Prayer and the Presidential Prayer Breakfast, um, I was uh, thinking, man, this is a, a monumental moment with the, the Presidential Prayer Breakfast and at the same time, the impeachment trials going on. And I was thinking, wow, this is a monumental unbeknowing to me that there would be more monumental things that would unfold in this year. Uh, right after that, going into the pandemic of the COVID virus that has affected thousands, millions of people around the world. Uh, people have battled through this. Uh, it's an unseen enemy uh, that we are still battling today as I speak to you. It's been a perplexing year. It's been a challenging year. Uh, we started in March of doing online services for our church on Sunday morning and Sunday night and Wednesday night, stopping all the services on the campus of our church. And uh, we, I was thinking, well, this will be over in a, a day or two, uh, a week or two, a month, maybe at the longest two months. Uh, unbeknowing to me that this would be a pandemic that would stretch even to the moment that I'm speaking to you today. Uh, it's been a terrible time for so many people. Our health care workers are, are stretched and stressed. Our world has been interrupted and changed dramatically. Our churches are changed, have been forced to change dramatically. It has been, and the perplexity of this time has been amazing and alarming to me. Uh, it's been, uh, emotions have been, went from one to the other uh, on a scale from one to ten with our emotions for leaders. Uh, it's been way off the chart. There is no way in the world to describe the, the emotional uh, challenge that it's been for myself and for leaders across this country. It's been an amazing, uh, an alarming time. Uh, we've had to adapt and adjust. And, you know, I think so many times people forget that leaders are people too. And we're dealing with every kind of decision and emotion that you can imagine. Um, wanting to follow God, wanting to do what God would have us to do. Uh, while at the same time being uh, aware that we're in a challenging time in our uh, country with the pandemic and all the things that, that that entails. And it would take far too long for me to explain all of the emotional uh, challenges and the leadership decisions and the directions that we've had to evaluate, the meetings that we've had, the conversations we've had. Uh, the studies that we've done, it's been, uh, frankly, very exhausting uh, with all that's been going on in our world as individuals, as uh, families, as a church, as a nation. It's been uh, overwhelming. Not to mention uh, in, in the pandemic situation and then you have the climate situation with the hurricanes that have blasted our coast, uh, that has brought destruction and devastation uh, to so many people. Uh, it's been a, a unprecedented year of, of natural disasters from wildfires to, uh, to uh, hurricanes uh, that have hit our world. And then on top of that, we've had a presidential election with all kinds of uh, situations going on. Uh, we've had riots in our cities. We've had, um, it's, been, it's been an amazing, uh, alarming time. I use those two words together uh, as I'm speaking to you. Uh, I've said this over and over and over again. It has been amazing. It's amazing to me and alarming to me 
what I saw go on this year in our world, in our country, our schools have been challenged. Our, uh, our teachers have been stretched and stressed. Our um, educational systems have been, um, have been challenged to, to no end. Our families, uh, people that have kids in school, have made, had to make all kinds of adjustments and adapt to all kinds of things. Um, it, it's been crazy with all the things that are happening. And then I asked myself, here we are in what should be one of the most celebratory times of our year, uh, the holiday season. And if you're like me, uh, you're, you're looking at all of this and you're going, well, what's next? How do you fight this unseen enemy called the coronavirus? What does our nation look like in the future? Where is everything going? What is the landslide um, that we, uh, we, I feel like we're uh, living in a time where a snowball is rolling down the hill and it's getting faster and faster and bigger and bigger. And I am sitting there going, how do you deal with this? And I think everybody's coming up with the same uh, answer. We don't know. But there's one thing that I want to just kind of focus on quickly tonight. And that is in the book of Psalms. And we shall never, we should never forget this. Psalms chapter 33 and verse number 12. And I want you to take your Bible tonight. And I want you to open it up. And I want you to mark this verse. It says, blessed is the nation whose God is the Lord and the people uh, whom he has chosen for his own. Blessed is the nation whose God is the Lord. When I read that, I, I read this uh, with sadness in my heart. Somebody was asking me the other day, Brother Jacob, what do you think is coming our way? And I said, well, I, I'm not a prophet, but I do know that our nation has forgotten God. And here the psalmist is saying, blessed is the nation whose people, whose God is the Lord. Of course, that's referring to the nation of Israel and the, the people uh, whom he has chosen for his own. Of course, that's the Jews. We know that in the context that we're looking at today. But in reality, that's true in any nation. Uh, that is, blessed is the nation whose God is the Lord. God blesses nations who acknowledge Him as Lord. The people He has chosen to be His inheritance, the true believers. God blesses those. And uh, when I look at the world today, and I see what's in it, I'm looking at what's coming down the road. And uh, I'm not the bearer of bad news, and I'm not a prophet. I've never claimed to be. But I do want to tell you that I believe that there are some things that's going to come in down the road. I said, I said uh, months ago, uh, if you will remember, <clears throat> I said that October and November of this year, there would be big things that I believe was going to happen. And um, I believe that, that we are, are seeing uh, some, uh, some perplexing things that are coming. Uh, first of all, I believe that we're going to see a moral landslide uh, happening in our country. I believe that we're going to see the morals of our country uh, go further and further and further into the gutter more than we've ever seen in the history of this great nation. I'm sad to say that. I wished I didn't have to say that. Uh, I have a, a burden in my heart uh, of what I see coming. I see that uh, in, in our leadership, and I've always been the person that has been convinced that everything rises and falls on leadership. If you look at the leadership <clears throat> of our land, what, whatever your position may be, a lot of people gets into the, you know, the, the political position. Are you a Republican or are you a Democrat? 
Uh, was you are you a, are you a Trump supporter or are you a Biden supporter? And they, everybody's going to make their own choice about that. But hear me when I tell you this: uh, Donald Trump or Joe Biden is not the savior of the world. Neither one of them. Jesus Christ is the savior of the world. And the scripture does not say, blessed is the nation who, whose God is the president, or blessed is the nation whose God is a party. But it says, blessed is the nation whose God is the Lord. When we think about that, we have to realize that our hope is not found in a political party or in a president. But I do believe that when we have leaders in positions that uh, do not reflect biblical truths and are not embracing the Lord, then obviously the result is going to be a landslide uh, that's going to go further and further away from God. I mean, all you got to do is read your Bible. And you see that happening historically. I believe that coming down the road, that we're going to see a moral landslide. That is the morals of this country. And I hate to tell you this, they're going to go in the gutter. We're going to see things like we've never seen before. We're going to see a heavy push against abortion, like we've never seen before. We're going to see that happening. There's going to be an open season on unborn children. Um, we are going to see Americans to fund abortions like we've never seen it before. We will see a um, abortion on demand nationwide without any limits. We will force Americans to fund Planned Parenthood, the biggest abortion provider uh, ever. Uh, we're going to find that our leadership is going to um, promote that. Um, we're going to see that happen uh, coming. We're going to see um, our, our leaders that's going into office want to legalize all prostitution. Uh, we're going to see a sexual landslide uh, that's going to go in perversion like we've never seen before. Uh, we're going to see the agenda uh, that stands against biblical truth uh, from the sexual standpoint that's going to go into a cesspool um, and it's going to be accepted more and more and more. We're going to see <clears throat> all of those things begin to happen. We're going to see a more uh, visual and a more common uh, exposure of perversion like we've never seen before. Our kids are going to be exposed to more uh, that is ungodly than ever before. We're going to see the nations of the world uh, that I believe is going to align themselves against um, Israel like never before. We're going to see an alignment of China and Russia and Iran and Iraq and North Korea uh, that's going to raise their ugly heads in leadership. And we're going to see an international nightmare that I believe is coming uh, down the road very, very soon. I believe that the alignment against the nation of Israel is going to be very, very evident. Uh, that's going to happen very quickly. Um, I believe that the United States of America is going to take a position of neutral position uh, in the history, in the times past. Uh, we have taken an aggressive defense with aligning with Israel. I believe that we're going to see a neutralizing of that. And I believe that the nations of the world that have been wanting to destroy the nation of Israel are going to align themselves aggressively against the nation while America 
becomes very neutral in that. Uh, I believe all of this is going to happen. I believe that we're going to see uh, just a landslide of deterioration like we've never seen before. Ladies and gentlemen, I cannot, I cannot tell you the seriousness of the situation that we're in. This is a critical time, a critical time that we as a people, we as people that know the Lord, you're going to have, you're going to be forced to make a deliberate decision of whose side you're on. Hear me when I tell you this and hear me well. It is coming quickly to you, my friend. Are you going to be on God's side or not? I've used the term, the terms in the last few weeks, that I believe that it's going to be required of every believer to stay focused and faithful. You're going to have to make a conscious decision. Like Joshua declared, as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. You're going to be forced to make a conscious decision who you're going to serve. I believe that we're going to see a, a line that is drawn in eternity that's going to be more definite than any time ever in the history of the world as to who you're going to serve. I believe the days of half in and half out are over. I believe that churches today are going to have to make a deliberate decision of how we're going to focus and how we're going to function. If you're a believer in Christ and you know Jesus as your Savior, I want to say this to you. You need to become more dedicated, more faithful than you've ever been. The eternal lives of your children and your grandchildren are at stake here. The eternity of their souls are at stake. Can't you see the way it's all playing out? Can't you see that even with the, the COVID virus, uh, the thing that we saw with that is it's, it's, a, it's an attack from the enemy, and I believe that, uh, to cause people to be disconnected uh, from the things of fellowship with other believers in the church. And you know as well as I do, the longer people stay away, uh, the, the more uh, that they disengage themselves. It's pretty evident just by what we're doing, what we've been doing online. Uh, prior to us going online with our Sunday night service and our Wednesday night services, we were having large, large crowds. Now, looking at the analytics of people that are connecting with us, uh, every week it's less and less and less. What that tells me is uh, less and less people are taking uh, time on Sunday night to engage in the service. Less and less people are taking time on Wednesday night to get into Bible study. What does that mean for you and I? It means that more and more people are becoming less and less connected to the things of God. And we're going to have to make that decision of what we're going to do. It is fast approaching, ladies and gentlemen, as to what we, who are, who are we going to be following and who are we going to be committed to. Remember, blessed is the nation whose God is the Lord and the people whom he has chosen for his own inheritance. Now, I could talk to you forever tonight. My heart is heavy because, I, as for me, I know who I'm going to serve. I know what I'm going to do. I know where I'm going to be focused. I know I'm going to be, I know that. But I'm concerned about other families, other people. Uh, I beg of you, uh, today is the day that you're going to have to make that decision. Uh, if you don't know Jesus as your Savior, you need to invite Him into your heart today. If you've been one that's drifted, you need to get back where you need to be. It's urgent. There's an urgent call. I can't tell you what I, I'm telling you. I wish I could just come into the camera and share with you and grab you and let you see. We're headed toward rough times. Rough times. 
And I want to say this to you. Um, if you look at chapter 33 and verse number 18, it's, it's a word of encouragement. And the Bible says, Behold, the eye of the Lord is upon them that fear him, upon them that hope in his mercy. When you think about verse 18, what that does is says, God is watching over us. All of us that fear and place our hope in him. You need to be committed to Christ. You need to have your hope in him. And verse 20 says, for he is our help and our shield. Our heart, verse 21, will rejoice in him because we trusted in his holy name. Verse 22, let thy mercy, O Lord, be upon us according as we have hope in thee. There is no other answer. Our hope has to be in the Lord. And if you will place your hope in the Lord, and you will rejoice in Him, and you will trust in Him, and you will faithfully follow Him, then God watches that. He knows that. We don't need to become perplexed by all the things that's happening in the world. We need to become focused, faithful in Him. The two words that I use is focused and faithful. Focused and faithful on the Lord. I hope that you understand that this is a message from the heart of your pastor that I just want to reemphasize to you. We're living in perilous times. And our nation has forgotten God. And the opposite of being blessed is that we're under a curse. Blessed is the nation whose God is the Lord. I'm sad to say that in this nation, the Lord is not the one that we're turning to. And because of that, we need to realize that sin will abound. And all the things that we stand against and we preach against, you're going to see that it is going to become more evident. Uh, of all of that and my heart goes out for my grandchildren and my children because the world that they're going to see in the next few years is going to be a world that's very disturbing my hope is built on nothing less than Jesus blood and his righteousness my prayer is that you will take this message to heart and that you yourself will make a deliberate decision to be focused and faithful and trust in the Lord. Thank you so much for tuning in tonight. May the Lord bless you in the coming days, months, and who knows where it will go from there. I pray that I'll see you soon as we serve God together in our church. We're going to do everything we can do to keep going and being focused and faithful as we serve the Lord in the day that we live in today. Let's pray. Father, we thank you that you're a God and your eye is upon us. God, I thank you that I've never seen the righteous forsaken or their seed begging for bread. God, I pray that you will open the eyes of believers that they would be able to see, Lord, that now is the time not to, not to get away from you, but now is the time to draw ever near to you, Lord. Tough days are ahead, and I pray that you will bless your people with strength and help in these perilous days we live in. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. God bless you. I'll see you next time.